Hey everybody, welcome back to Touching Grass OTR. I am Jim. We have our next load. We are picking up um, in Tarboro, North Carolina and delivering in Noonan, Georgia. It's about 30 miles dead head to get to our pickup. We don't technically have to be there till one o'clock and it's only 10 o'clock now. But we've been sitting here at our at our previous delivery point for four hours waiting on the load. So I'm just gonna head on over there and see if we can't get in early. Um, and then we will most likely be headed home after this load. My guess is that's what we're going to do because I've only got about 15 hours left on my, on my 70 hour clock. Now I won't recap any hours tomorrow, but I will start recapping the day after tomorrow. So theoretically we could continue rolling on recaps, but most likely since we're going back to Noonan, we'll be delivering there tomorrow morning, heading back up to the yard for a reset. Um, I may get a call from my dispatcher and we may work something else out. I don't know. But uh, that is what I am thinking is the plan right now. Most likely we are going to go down I-95, pick up I-20 in South Carolina, and then take that across into Georgia. Noonan's, Noonan's on the southwest side of the, of the city, so we will probably take 285 down around the south, deliver tomorrow morning, and then head back up to the yard in, in Suwannee. All right, let's get rolling. I said it but it is only a 500 mile load so even though we've been sitting for four hours and we have the option of doing a split we could theoretically get all the way there today and just stop in noon and tonight um, but getting down close to Georgia getting down close to the city it might be difficult to find a place to stop or to sleep unless we can park on site and from looking at the map it's that's a possibility um, is we can drive all the way down there. Oh, I forgot to start my GPS. Uh, we can get all the way down there. Fortunately, I'm going the right direction. We could potentially get all the way down there and just sleep on site at the receiver tonight, which would be the easiest way to do this. That way I don't have to find us a place to, to sleep. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Turn right onto Anaconda Road. Um, no, oh, okay, that's not the street. <laughs> this is right. the street. This makes a little more sense. After a quarter of a mile, you will reach your waypoint. The waypoint will be on your left. After 1,000 feet, you will reach your waypoint. The waypoint will be on your left.
You have reached your waypoint. It's on your left. Shipping and receiving. After a quarter of a mile, turn left. All the way in the back to the left. We're still way early, but I'm going to go ahead and see if we can't get checked in. See you soon. Well, we're in the wrong place. We got to go around the other side of the building, I think. guys get loaded but we're here now that's the important thing I'm gonna go check in again all right well we are in the right place this time 
so we're just waiting on the, one of these trucks to pull out of here and then we'll get in. and kicked up enough dust to got in my eyes.
Okay. All right, let's wait to get loaded. See you soon. Well, <laughs> I guess getting here really didn't really benefit as much. I mean, we got into the dock pretty early, but uh, it's two o'clock now. Uh, our appointment time was one. We are not done loading yet. I went back in the back and checked. Uh, it's mostly done. Apparently they've got to cut down some rods still that have to be loaded, and so they're not done yet. But uh, we're kind of sitting here next to a, a railroad tracks. I decided to go for a bitty walk and uh, get some fresh air instead of just sitting there in the truck. Um, but uh, that's where we're at. Still getting loaded. There's where we're sitting. Another truck has come and gone. Or another truck has gone and another one has replaced it while we've been waiting. But uh, we are still in place, still hanging out. Not going nowhere yet. It has given me the chance to finish uploading the video. So at least there's that. Well, not uploading, editing, editing. Um, this one's going to be a, a big one file size wise. It's not really much bigger than the rest of them time wise, but uh, I switched to 4K video, so it's creating larger files. So it means it's going to take a little longer to upload it, but uh, didn't really take any longer to edit it. Well, yeah, I did. I take that back. Took longer to edit it, but not because it's 4K. It's because I'm now using two cameras and the split view i've still got to kind of nail that down and figure out the editing and how to edit that more efficiently but uh yep all right back to waiting a little while later four hours and 45 minutes later <laughs> holy moly well, I can't blame it all on them. I mean, we did get here super early comparatively, but 11 o'clock, 12, we got here two hours early. So let's just call it two hours and 45 minutes later, we're loaded with lumber. And it's heavy. 43,500 pounds according to the paperwork. So let's get this thing all closed up. I'm halfway considering since we spent three hours plus at the uh, receiver of the last load, just waiting on this load. We could do a 3 7 split, but if I wait just two hours longer, we get that whole split, and then we have paused the clock again. And basically have a full, almost a full day worth of clock time. Because right now, with our split, well, we've still got eight hours, which is going to get us most of the way there. But it'll be, it's going to be late by the time we get anywhere. back to the back. So we're going to have to go get it weighed. Somewhere. Alright, 
we still slide. Go get it weighed. We've got plenty of time to drive. Obviously, we won't stop. We won't make it all the way to Georgia tonight. So we'll find some place in route to stop for the night. But I'm gonna get pulled up place out of the way and get set up so that we can get out of here because I don't want to wait I don't want to wait another two hours even though that would just it, it wouldn't really buy us a whole lot so all right I'm gonna uh, go check on things and get things ready so we'll see you soon Big. I didn't know it was this big. I mean, we're at, we're in Kenley, which is right across the interstate from the pilot that we stayed at last night. <laughs> so we've come for full, full circle today. But uh, this Petro is huge. I got to get around to the scale. The bus is kind of in the way.
once I get scaled, get everything set. Are these trucks? No, they're not sitting on the scales, they're just sitting on the side. Once I get scaled and get everything good to go, I'm going to go in there to the Kenley 95 and grab some dinner. doing here fashion way and actually talk to a human being. First way. First way. Truck number. 501. All right. creatively next to J.B. Hunt there. It's silly that I have to go in and do this the old-fashioned way. fun time's over let's get back to work shall we had a good meal the iron skillet so now I got myself a full belly and we still got six hours on the clock um, on the split clock I'm not going to use all of it but I think I will get down to South Carolina where our fuel stop is and get refueled and then we'll find some place between South Carolina and Georgia to stop for the night. Sounds like a plan to me. How about y'all? Not that you have any real say in the matter because it's going to be at least a week. <laughs> well, maybe not a, a, at least a week, but pretty close to a week before you'll see this and by that time I'll be long gone from here
catch you on the flip side. Good morning. Well, it is 8.30 and I didn't sleep in. Um, we actually didn't roll in here until after 10 o'clock last night. So the clock is now ready to start ticking. But uh, I just went in and had breakfast. Got myself a nice omelet and uh, ready to get rolling. We've got about a, about 200 miles left to go, I think. Um, <coughs> technically our appointment's for 9 a.m., but there's no way we were gonna make that. Not pulling in when we pulled in last night. Um, so, it is what it is. We'll get there and then we'll go home. See you soon. Alrighty, let's get on out of here. Trailer ABS light is on. One roll four. Go away in route. We'll see. flannel shirt because it's time to do laundry out of short sleeves but we are going home today so it'll get done I didn't record much content yesterday other than the pickup. Um, my daughter's back in the hospital again yesterday, so I spent most of the most of the evening on the phone with her. Um, and that's why I didn't record a whole lot of the trip. But uh, it's not life-threatening. Uh, we've determined that much. She's got to do some more tests. 
she's unfortunately she, she was traveling so she's not even at her home hospital or, or talking to her, her regular doctors <laughs> but uh, so they've but they've pretty much diagnosed it she originally went in uh, day before yesterday thinking she was uh, thinking maybe it was appendicitis but uh, it's not that um, it's nothing nothing life-threatening but you know it's just, it's just causing her a lot of pain and uh, she's a trooper she's dealing with it she'll be going home probably today and then get back back with her regular doctors and figuring things out and see what she wants to do long term job popo just pulling out into the traffic without so much as a turn signal I swear and they want us to follow the law who polices the police we need, a, we need a police department that's out here patrolling the roads that's only looking at police cars. <laughs> because I seriously swear, I don't think any of them actually obey the law. They may know the law, but they don't care. They, they don't obey it. They think it doesn't apply to them because they're the ones that enforce it. They still won't turn on another cop. They see one of their one of their fellow cops doing something wrong, and they don't correct that behavior. So that makes them just as bad as the ones doing something wrong, because it's their job to enforce the law. But when they see another cop breaking the law, they don't do it. So it, it's it's hard to trust the police. It's hard to trust any law enforcement when they don't enforce the laws on themselves. They should be held to a higher standard. They should hold themselves to a higher standard if they want us to trust them. But they don't. They don't even make an attempt at it. I see it all the time out here. All the time. Cops speeding on their phones. Failure to use turn signals. Simple stuff. Simple stuff that we would get tickets for. They do all the damn time. I have no respect for them. And that's why. Because they, they're hypocrites. They want to enforce the laws on us, but they don't enforce it on themselves. Anyways, I'll get off my high horse and start driving.
see y'all do it. <laughs> We're almost there. Two miles to go. Four minutes. It's just up here. Just a little bit up on the right. Through a couple of stoplights. We've only been driving about four hours. But I have had to stop multiple times. This is one of those days. Some days are good, some days are not good. But this is one of those days where my bladder has just not been uh, cooperating with me. And I gotta go again. But it has been a nice day. Easy driving up until we got into the city. Got a little bit thick through there. No big surprise. 285 is always pretty busy. Except middle of the night. You can get through it on the middle of, in the middle of the night, no problem. A lot of people don't like 285. I don't really have a problem with it. But maybe it's because I've done it so many times I just kind of know the right pattern to take to get, around, to get around it without getting stuck too much, getting into too much traffic. But, you know, you never know really because there's, in, at any moment in time, there could be an accident or something on it that uh, just gets it all backed up. But uh, I guess I've been fortunate. I have only spent significant amounts of time in 285 traffic maybe a handful of times and I live around here um, you know obviously rush hour is a terrible time to go through so I avoid that but uh, it's one almost one o'clock it's quarter to one right now didn't have any problems at all going through and it is a work day so weekends are not a problem um, early morning, late at night, it's not really a problem. It's just rush hour. And every city's got the same issue. Some cities have it worse than others. New York, D.C., their rush hour never really ends throughout the day. You can make good time going through those places After if you go through in the middle of the night. Right but any any time during the day, it's just kind of suck. This is our street. Now turn right. LA, pretty much any time during the day is gonna suck. Depending on which particular route you take through LA on any given day. Sometimes, and I, I don't know LA traffic enough to be able to predict. After one mile, turn right. When roads are gonna be good and when they're not. LA is really a problematic city for getting out of it, at least, in less than, you know, four hours. Especially if I'm going up the hill into Hesperia from pretty much anywhere in the city, it's it's a nightmare. You'll run your you'll run four hours just to get 30 miles. It's crazy. Well, I guess it's it's more like 80 miles. It's crazy. I've had it take longer than that.
quarter of a mile, you will reach your destination. Must be a construction site or something. lumber so they're probably building something. Let's make sure we got the address right. 23 McBride. 13 right here. truck up ahead so I think we're in the right place. Doesn't seem like the kind of truck kind of street that you would put uh, warehouses on though. <laughs> you have reached your destination. Yeah. The destination is on your left. Gate. Our tandems are way back. So we're not cornering very easy here. Most likely we'll be in this spot right here. But I'm going to get straight and back up down this little. Uh, lane that's behind us just kind of to get out of the way because there's no way we're getting in there until that truck moves and so we got to get out of his way because once he's done there's anybody else that has to come through here. Anybody that wants to get out of here, I am going to go inside and check in, and then we'll see what we do next. Well, yeah, we're here just still hanging out. It's a nice day. It's a little warm. Definitely too warm to be wearing a long sleeve flannel, flannel shirt, though. Uh, but it is laundry day, and I am going home. I've got everything packed up and ready to go, except for the cameras on the truck which as soon as we get docked and uh, I can record all that footage, those are gonna go into my backpack. Um, and I'm not gonna bother recording the deadhead home to the yard because as soon as we get back there, I wanna get off the truck and go home. 
<laughs> I don't have to spend any time disassembling and packing anything. Um, it's all done. It's all ready to go. We just got to get off, get our load. There we are. Uh, and there's where we're going. It's going to be a weird back. Uh, it's, I, I can't, I can't switch it. Let's see. Um, so I don't know if you can see where that truck is. He's right basically on the end of the building, but there's not a whole lot of space in front of him. So, but there is to the right. So it's kind of going to be almost an, I, I'm thinking what I'm going to do and I'm not sure. Let's see if you can see, I'm going to start, I'm going to swing wide and then cut towards the, towards the right there just long enough to, and basically do a blind side back, but, but not completely, not completely. So, um, hopefully it, it, it won't be too complicated, but I'm going to put the camera on the passenger side for you guys to watch, or there's a fence line down there. I may mount the camera on the fence so you can watch me from the outside of the truck this time. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'll do. I'll do it when it's time to do it. But it uh, looks like he's almost done loading, maybe. It sounds like he's cranked his engine up. So we may be about to get in there. Right, so he's doing the reverse, basically, of what I'm going to do to get in there. And he's essentially hooked it to the right and then backed out and that's kind of essentially what I'm going to have to do to get in there and then he's going to cut enough that he can get out through that driveway.
well, that was more complicated than it needed to be, but uh, we got it done. Uh, main problem was is that in the process of maneuvering around it in here, all the air leaked out of the system. So the suspension wasn't high enough to for, for the dock, and I couldn't get the air back into it. So we just kind of had to sit here while the air ran for a little while and, and, and kind of refill the, the, the tanks back there. Uh, but it took a little while. Uh, I'm thinking there might have been an easier way of doing this, but got it done. That's what's important. And uh, that's going to be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you were a first timer here and haven't subscribed and enjoyed the video, make sure you uh, hit like and subscribe. If you are a return viewer, thank you again. Um, please let me know in the comments any com any uh, suggestions you've got, good or bad. Um, I may or may not implement them, but. <laughs> Uh, I'm always open to, to, to new ideas, so see you in the next video.